Okay, hello everybody. Today on my bench I've got a Bogner Shiva. You can see that there at the, at the edge there. And all I'm really going to be doing with this is for a customer I'm going to go through it and I'm going to replace the filter capacitors. These ones, I may have a hard time finding a source and this video may not come out if I can't find a source. But as you can see these are kind of a, a radial style shorter cap. And so i got to try and see if I can find a source for them. I'm uh, pinging around on some groups that I tend to frequent, uh, but uh, hopefully somebody there can give me some pointers. Got some really big ones here. These are 270 mic at 400 volts. These ones are 100 mic at, I think it was 450 volts. And then all of these are 50 mic at 500 and, uh, what was it? 450 volts, I think, as well. I just can't see it as easily now, or 500. Anyway, um, so I'm just going to try and find some of those. This one is a 1500 mic at 25 volt. And uh, let's see, what's this one? 10,000 mic at 16 volts. So, uh, and then there's also one other little one here. So effectively, I guess there's two of those. Uh, and I, I'm touching in here because I did drain this. I, I ahead of time, that's a warning people should always be wary of. Uh, make sure uh, you drain your filter capacitors. But I did get a voltmeter up here and measure that before I'm looking around in here. So that's one of those typical warnings. Make sure you know how to drain the filter caps. Because if you're touching fingers in that amp, you can shock the... the you know what out of yourself so anyway i'm going to get in and see if i can source these if so i'm not even going to pull these this out until i can see if i can source them if not i might have to tell him to try and see if he can go straight to bogner and if that's the case then of course i won't be showing this video but if so you'll see how this all turns out uh, and what happens after the job i'll kind of try and show things as they go it's an interesting looking amp uh, somewhere i thought i'd read that it's very similar to a particular marshall amp but uh i did notice something interesting i'd like to know a little bit more about these actual optocouplers in the main circuit path Somebody has kind of sketched out part of this uh, schematic I found online. I'll possibly post that here as well. But they're, they're pretty um, careful about not letting people see what this schematic really is or how it works. So, um, But yeah, it's uh, we'll see how I uh, if I'm able to find the source of these caps. I'm not 100% sure that uh, the caps are a problem yet because he had said he thinks it just sounds a little farty and a little flubby and it's not... Not as good as it used to. It could be the tubes. He said he'd ordered some tubes. I told him, I see some little bubbling here and here. And then this one also has a little bit of a bubbly depression. So it's possible they're starting to go bad. It is only about a 10-year-old amp. He said he thought it was about 15. But it looks like I'm seeing on here at least this, uh, the date code on this transformer says April 2005. Now, I guess it's possible that he had that replaced. Or he didn't know if it was replaced before he got it. I'm not sure. But uh, I do also see a couple things. I'll try and get a close-up in those areas. All right, I don't know if you can see that super well, but right here, I also see a lot of kind of crusty looking stuff going on. Let me move over, I guess I'm in the wrong spot. So there's some pretty crusty looking stuff going on right here and right here. And I don't know if that was just some of the solder flux left behind or if that one's running a bit more current than it should. But especially if these caps are not doing well, it's possible that that guy is running a little bit hot. But uh, uh, so I will, um, you know, get that board out if I can find a source for these caps and replace them. Uh, one of the things that it, I may even try and do is, even though it might be tight, is try and get some more standardized uh, radial instead of axial, or vice versa, whichever one that is, and just try and kind of stand them upright and fold the leads down. Because the 100 mic, uh, 500 voltish or 450 voltish ones like this nowadays are much smaller too. Just even the 10 years, they've been able to make them a lot smaller, so... At any rate, we'll, uh, uh, we'll go through the next steps here in a bit, but uh, luckily I don't have to do anything else really with the amp. I just have to change out the caps and see if that helps clean up some of the problems he's hearing. So we'll get back with you when we are done. Okay, as I mentioned, if I get the parts, I'm going to do it. I actually have gotten a hold of all the parts I need. So uh, I don't know, I was reading off some of those numbers, but I actually started reading them closer and I was off a little bit, but I did double check before ordering. These guys are actually, I think they're like 180 or 186 microfarad, 180 microfarad, not 100. These are not 50, but 56, but I was able to get replacement parts of all of them. For example, here are the 180. And the one thing that I find quite interesting is how much sizes of things have changed. Look at that. This is a 180 microfarad. This is by Nippon Chemicon. And that's, uh, this one is, I think, the same. Nippon Chemicon, but look at that. That's the difference in sizing. I don't know the best way to show that, but... Difference in sizing between then and now. They're massively different sized in, in you know circumference and in height. So, and that's been the same with all of them. The only thing that I thought found was a bit interesting as I measured the height of these guys because I didn't want anything to be too much taller than this when I ordered these things. And all of them tend to be in that range, but one of the interesting ones was these replacements for these 56 microfarad at, at 450 volts. Those are Mallory's. I don't think I could see any Mallory's, but I got these guys, which are also Nishikon. 
So Nippon Chemicon, Nichicon, several other really great brands that I was able to find. They're pretty tall, but look how narrow those are. And they're still shorter in height than these guys. So they'll fit in the same space as these were fitting. Um, so I'm, you know, I uh, also found the, this is the big 15,000 microfarad at 25 volts, which I believe is this one. Look at the difference there. This one's a little bit bigger around, but way shorter. Uh, and the other thing though that I was a little bit, now I'm a little worried about looking at this, is it's going to be a tighter fit because I have to fit this electrolytic in here also, as well as this guy, and this is a little bit bigger around. I didn't think to check that, but I think we'll, we'll be able to get her all in there. So, but I'm replacing these two, these two, there's one of these here and here, and then all of these. Um, I did realize after I've already got the order done, there's a couple of smaller caps here and here that are also electrolytics, but uh, I can't say for sure what they're for. They seem to be more about a, a separate power supply for something separate, like maybe relays and whatnot. Uh, and so, you know, because these are the big guys that would be what you're running through for your, your filtering of your audio signal. So that's what I wanted to make sure I changed. If for some reason I get done and I'm still feeling like it's not super clean sounding or something's a little off, I'll possibly also go and replace those three caps as well. They're very small ones. Should be pretty easy to source as well. So I'm going to go ahead and pull it out. I don't think I'll show the whole video of me taking screws out and lifting the board out, but I'm going to have to disassemble all the front and back panel pieces so I can kind of fold those, you know, in carefully to pull it away. So I will uh, come back here in a bit. After the break, you'll see where we're at. All right, so as you can see, I've got it up and out. It was quite a pain in the butt. Uh, they did a really good job of making it hard to access this. I could have desoldered all these wires and these wires, made it a little easier, but I was trying to limit that. I only desoldered the LED up here, and I desoldered the, um, there's like the feedback and then a, a fan power supply here. These two little blue wires. That's all I wanted to do just to make it easier to get it up and over. So I'm kind of working with it, tilting it this way to be careful not to have to, you know, desolder a whole lot more. I've got all these ones out now. I've got these guys and these guys out. So now I'm going to go through the process of putting them back in again. But as you can see, uh, halfway done. Now I just got to resolder the new ones in, put it back together again, and test it out. So we'll show you that in a bit. All right. So I'm about to put it all back together again. But as you can see now, I've got all these new caps in. Uh, I got the new caps up here and here and here. Uh, and as you can see, pretty much all of them are small. The only one that was a little different, even though it's a lot shorter, it's a little bit, just a little bit wider, but it was enough to kind of pinch this guy. So I kind of had to shift it a little bit over, shift that over a little bit, but it got it in there. So uh, I'm going to finish now putting it all back in and reattaching everything. And then we should be good to uh, light her up. All right. So I've got this over here. We're going to have the light bulb limiter. Anytime I'm powering, usually you only want those for an old, old uh, amp, but since this is somebody's amp, I don't want to mess up. Uh, what will happen when first inrush current will brighten up, but it should dim right back down. If it doesn't dim back down, that means there's a fault to ground. And the good thing is, is this is eating up all that extra current, so it doesn't burn something here, and I'll quickly shut it back off. But uh, so <clears throat> here goes nothing. And look, it, it dimmed right down. So that's a good sign. Light bulb still on. All right, so what I'll do at this point is now I just need to go get a guitar, plug it in, and try it out and see how it's working. Okay, we'll be back in a bit. Okay, so I've got I've got everything hooked up. Let's see, I just got to make sure I hook up the audio output, which is this guy. 8 ohm output. And we'll let you hear a quick brief tonality here, and then I'm gonna, I've got to get this back to the client, so I'm not going to be able to jam on it really, but uh, here we go. Warm up a little, and this seems to me to be pretty quiet. Of course, I don't have the tone or any of that kind of stuff set up right. I just kind of have whatever it was. Sorry, I'm getting close to the transformers or anything. But uh, I'm going to shoot a little bit of uh, uh, goo gone, or contact cleaner inside of all the pots, clean those and turn those until they start feeling nice and fluid, uh, and then turn it back on and test that in a minute, and then after that I'm pretty much good. So there you have it, back up and running. That little bit of hum you're hearing is just because uh, I'm too close to it, but when I'm a little bit away it's clean. Yeah. 